Hi everybody, welcome to Tuesday. Uh, brief boss fight 2 update. Uh, production has begun. Um, editing has begun. Briefly. Um, I ran into a major scene issue that I've figured out. And necessity is often the mother of invention. I actually think it's going to be cooler than my original idea. That actually makes more sense than what I was originally going to, um go to more on this for the patrons um on thursday i will get in more in depth because that's not what this video is about i just want to keep you guys it yes it is still working away just so you know the hype is real uh but if you want more details about this kind of stuff and oh you want more details delilah thank you but and you want to be involved in the in the process of ongoing feedback with uh boss fight you can inspire parts of the show Help support this channel. Become a monthly patron. Patreon.com slash Leanna K. Um, the, the backers and the patrons were a big reason why a lot of things in the first episode were the way they were. I made a playlist too, finally. Go me. I'm terrible about that stuff. But what I'm not terrible about is not being dumb in general about video games. And I have been shaking my head. Uh, at the drama surrounding Spider-Man Miles Morales. Because, yeah, the, the Spider-Man Miles Morales announcement was super, super brief in the, the Sony event. On what was it? It seems so long ago now. Thursday? But it was super brief. It was just brief trailer. Foop Miles Morales. Yay, 2020. Uh, like holiday 2020. That's it. And for some odd reason, I mean, part of it was a Sony executive saying it was a sequel and people reading more into that than what was there. The, the issue we're, we seem to be having is that, and that we don't really have a word for these sorts of games. Because it's apparently something similar to uh, Uncharted Lost Legacy. Though hopefully it'll be a better damn game than Uncharted Lost Legacy. That was disappointing for me. Um, but I, I think it'll be meatier than Lost Legacy will just because there's so much to explore with Miles Morales. But, you know, any expectation that, that Insomniac would be turning around a full numbered sequel so soon after the, you know, after the original PS4 game, Marvel, what is it? Marvel Spider-Man? So weird. That, that game, Marvel Spider-Man only came out in 2018 and it was a big game. It is too soon for there to be a full numbered sequel. People are still playing the original. Like it's going to be a couple years more. So any expectation that it would be anything but sort of a 1.5, like the same basic stuff in Marvel Spider-Man with a new story. I don't know why you expected more than that. You know, like, yeah, Destiny 2 came out fairly quick after the, the original Destiny, but that was partially because Destiny 1 was like, you know, it was good enough to sell Destiny 2, but it was pretty broken in a lot of ways. And, and so there was so much to fix that they could put out another game. Marvel Spider-Man was not like that. It was a glorious, glorious, glorious game. <laughs> and... I don't know why, like, no, nobody knew how it was going to do, it was a new idea, like, unless there are teams, like, you know, on the Call of Duty, there was, like, I think, what, like, three different teams being able to do annual titles? People don't do that anymore, because it's insane. Fans get tired, the developers get tired, everybody gets tired, but, but also, I mean, e even, you know, even with multiple teams expecting something totally new with a game like this that like think about how much time there is between god of war games okay how much time there was between horizon zero dawn and the announced sequel we don't even have a release date for the announced sequel like think about how much time there is between 
full Uncharted games. The idea that this was going to be anything but what it is was foolish. But equally foolish, some of the knee-jerk, like, hot takes that came out, like, Miles Morales deserved better. I'm not as surprised at those because, I mean, hot takes are like a thousand monkeys writing on a thousand typewriters, right? Like, for every, you know, there can be a million good takes. One bad one is going to get a lot more attention. Which is kind of encouraging people to knee-jerk and write dumb things because it gets a ton of traffic. And no matter how angry you got, you looked, you shared, you engaged... They gotcha. Um, so, you know, but I, I do want to give the Insomniac devs credit for managing to do, do two things that so many people and teams and, you know, marketing departments have messed up in the past. One is just sort of legacy characters in the Marvel Universe. Remember female Thor? Of course you do. There should have been nothing wrong with female Thor. The problem with female Thor came about because somebody decided to mouth off and not go, you know, okay, this is a new character. No, she is Thor. She is Thor. There's no other character. She's Thor. And people went, don't piss in my ear and tell me it's raining. Thor is his name. It's not like Green Lantern or The Flash where there's like, you know, Hal Jordan and Kyle Rayner and Gon John, Gon Stewart? John Stewart and Guy Gardner. And, you know, there's a Green Lantern named Leanna. Mogo, Kilowog. Mogo's awesome. <laughs> like a Green Lantern is a planet. But I digress. Um, but, I mean, it, it, you know, there, it isn't like Wally West and Barry Allen and Jay Garrick. You know, they're all Flashes. It was, no, she is Thor. And it's always a mistake when they're like, we're going to take away something instead of we're going to add something. That's on the Marvel side. And, you know, I mean, case in point, what's the one of the most successful legacy characters in Marvel in, in recent memory? Kamala Khan. She didn't actually replace anybody because Ms. Ms. Marvel became Captain Marvel and then Kamala Khan became Miss Marvel. There was a reason for that character existing. Whoa, cat hair. Momo fur. Um, she didn't replace anybody. It was extra. You know, you could still read The Adventures of Carol Danvers if you wanted. And then there's this super cool, awesome, quirky Kamala Khan girl. You know? It worked. It, I always think it's a mistake to be subtractive in those introductions. Oh, no, we're going to take away Iron Man. We're going to take away Batman. We're going to take away Thor and force the people who enjoy those characters to deal with somebody else. It's always an awful idea. And, like, what happens is there's all this outrage, and, and that gets headlines, but ultimately it creates a lot of, um, like, alienation of existing paying customers on both sides. Like, people who want more diversity and people who... I won't, I won't characterize it because somebody will get mad at me. But, you know, everybody's tired. Everybody's alienated. Everybody's tired of the fighting. It's not good for the community or the industry long term, right, to just market based on outrage. Um, but then there's this issue in video games of handoffs in franchises as well. I mean, there's, they're, they're, <coughs> Killing Cade in Destiny. It's like, it was like the Ragnarok, right? He was the balder of the Ragnarok of Destiny. Like, and and the, the crappy, like, updates have nothing to do with the narrative decision to kill off a character. But it's just kind of interesting that sometimes decisions are so, what? That you wreck the soul of your game. And it's not so much that... Killing off Cade 6, man. Oh, no, now suddenly I don't have to make games anymore. The decision to, to kill him off was an indication that they were sort of going in the wrong direction. Because it's one thing to kill off a character and then bring them back fairly soon. And they go, oh, okay, Bungie, all is forgiven. But no, he's been gone a really long time. And 
to me, it seemed kind of pointless. Like, yeah, you can get his weapon, and there's all these little Easter eggs within the game now, but it's always a mistake to remove a character people like instead of just making them go away for a while so they can come back and everybody will be happy maybe in case it was a mistake. But no, like, developers have to be these freaking... They're going for an Oscar, even though you can't win an Oscar in in uh, in video games. The, the twit that compared Last of Us 2 to Schindler's List, you know, it was a dumb thing to say, but he's on to something because that's the sort of thing some of these auteur video game developers are trying to do. They want the the prestige of something like a Schindler's List. And guys, you're in the wrong industry for that. You know, like, games aren't like movies. Movies can have those... Um, you know, those movies that not as many people see, but all the people who see them are like, oh, it's glorious. You know, it's, it's a niche market. Whereas the, the, the niche, the same thing, the, the enthusiast core of gaming is people like me who are being, who are played games for a really long time and don't necessarily want that as an experience. You know, something like The Last Guardian or something like Nier that tugs at our heartstrings is fine, but there has to be some candy along with the spinach, you know, if that makes any sense. They're games, they're not movies, right? If a movie is bleak and dreary and depressing, it's over in, um, you know, one and a half to two hours now, two and a half hours, Peter Jackson movies are three hours, Kenneth Branagh's Hamlet was four hours, but you know what I mean. It's over fairly quickly and it's not interactive, so it's it's less depressing. You are an observer. You're not somebody who's who participates in something dreary and icky. And every so often you get something that people claim works, like Papers, Please. But Papers, Please was a better concept of a game than an execution of the game. I tried Papers, Please. It made me feel ugh, which is what it was supposed to make me feel. But I gave up on it because it made me feel ugh. Like, okay, neat idea. But I played the Stanley Parable over and over and over again because it was funny. And that was a high concept game. But Papers, Please, I was just like, no. No, I don't want that. I get the point you're making. But, you know, the follow-up, um, Return of the Oberdin... I was engrossed by that. Like, it, that that worked better as a game instead of an idea of a game. Like, I'm making a point with this game. That's Papers, Please. Return of the Obra Dinn, um, its accessibility op, uh, uh, issues aside, was good as a game. And, you know, what a lot of these companies, when they're like, we're going to do diversity, which means, oh, now it's, you know, Nathan Drake's daughter and, you know, th this sort of replacement. We're going to reboot Lara Croft to make her boobs smaller. Um, you know, things like that. That ticks people off because, again, you're taking away. Again, it's the same issue with Marvel, but... There's something more to it than that because playable characters aren't just characters. They're avatars, right? If they wanted to restart Uncharted all over again with new characters, that was built in. Like, I remember when I demoed the original Uncharted... And I, I said to the dev, I broke Uncharted 1 and E3, by the way. Like, totally crashed it. They had to reset it. I'm, I'm very good at that. It's like I have an EMP. It's the ginger thing. Um, but I asked, why? what's with the name? What's with the Uncharted brand? Instead of just calling it, you know, Drake's Fortune. And they said, we want to be able to explore the franchise beyond Nathan Drake. And it's like, oh, okay. That makes sense. So if this particular character, you know, if that moves on, no, it's the idea of sort of, you know, virtual tourism in these cool places with like a Lara Croft Tomb Raider kind of core mechanic. Okay, I get it. But then it, it became about the characters, which I always found really weird because the characters were all just homages to adventure serial characters. They were never supposed to be that deep. And that's what made them work. And they forgot that. They started to forget that around Uncharted 3 
completely forgot it in Uncharted 4. And the game suffered as a result. There's, you know, you compare that to the hit and miss stuff that uh, Assassin's Creed has managed. Everybody forgets poor um, ugh, Altair. But, you know, if Assassin's Creed, if the original Assassin's Creed wasn't good enough to, you know, get them to a sequel, then it wouldn't have gotten a sequel, right? Well, I mean, we're still waiting on Beyond Good and Evil 2, which is a prequel. Who knows if that's ever going to happen, right? They have to sell well enough to get there. And then they sort of, you know, refined it. And Ubi does that. Like Watch Dogs 2, you know, they figure out what didn't necessarily work in the first one, which is sort of a concept game. And then they make sort of this populist, really cool second game. And that's the thing that kind of takes off. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm like the only one who likes Connor as an assassin in Assassin's Creed 3. I like Connor. I like Adewale. Most people like the, uh, the white guys more, um, for various reasons that I'm not going to get into, but you know, that's, that's one of those things that again, I think part of it is that a lot of people, um, came into Assassin's Creed in the Ezio trilogy, right? So he became synonymous with that experience of playing Assassin's Creed or that kind of world. And then having to get used to somebody totally new, you know, it wasn't until, what's his name, Edward Kenway came along, uh, who was kind of like Ezio, only a pirate. People like, okay, this is familiar now because types of characters and play styles go together in people's minds, right? And they tried real hard. And I think they did it better with Adewale, but they tried to sort of change up the play styles with the the physicality of the character. And Adewale is very, like, slashy. Same way, you know, Connor had sort of the tomahawks. I think the big problem with Assassin's Creed 3 was the 10-hour tutorial in a 35-hour game. Just saying, but I digress. Um, you know... The, the uh, Assassin's Creed has sort of diluted its core concept now, but becoming more RPGs, uh, but it's working for, for them. So it's only people like me who have been playing for a really, really long time who miss that first Civ stuff, but they've managed to do it because now people are used to it being a different character every time, you know, um, I think if they did another thing where they stuck with what was like Assassin's Creed 2... And I swear there were more than three games in the Ezio trilogy. I don't know why. But um, people got used to that and then they changed it and it took them a while. Am I making sense? I think I'm making sense. Getting back to Spider-Man. Instead of getting you to love Peter Parker and then taking him away, they telegraphed so clearly where they were going with that franchise. I mean, Miles Morales' inclusion in the first game doesn't make any sense unless they had this prepared as a follow-up. And the ending of Spider-Man, which I won't spoil because play it, please, it's a really good game, tease up this. So anybody who played the first game isn't going to be disappointed because they knew it was coming. They set it up. It wasn't, oh, do over, you know, suddenly comes out of, out of left field kind of thing. Um, they telegraphed it. And I think that's why the reception was so good. Yes, Miles Morales is, a, is an existing character, but I don't, I don't think that would be enough to quell the outrage if they didn't tee it up. People get very attached to characters they like in a game because that character and that experience of playing that game it's less like watching a movie and more like spending time with a friend who will never hate you and dump you and then they do because they leave and you have to get used to this new friend you know it's all the childhood trauma of the parents moving and you have to make new friends all over again who you don't know and you don't have any of those in jokes you know like you know what I mean I'm being silly but it makes sense right I mean Mass Effect with all that time, with whatever shepherd you picked, and then we have to get used to the My Face is Tired twins, um, there's a shining example of not only was that, pardon the pun, magic not there, 
but we had to get used to totally different people all at the same time. And people just went, bleh, you know, Dragon Age 2 suffered from something of the same thing because Dragon Age Origin, you were the warden and then you were the, you know, the champion of Kirkwall. And, and I mean, that was a development problem, but by Inquisition, we now knew that, oh no, it's a different character every time for various reasons, you know, including the fact that, well, we have all this pre-built story and we need all the endings to be valid. And so we need to start with a brand new character because we don't want to make canon endings. Um, but, you know, so going forward, developers, if you have, be like Spider-Man, if you have any, any inkling that you may want to change up your characters in another installment, meaning, yeah, you're probably going to want to because you never know how the first game's going to do. Get people to know the potential spin-off characters. And it doesn't have to be just one, but get people to know them in the first game. So then when you jump, it's more like, you know, Adewale and the Freedom Cry DLC, not... Connor Kenway in Assassin's Creed 3. And it's certainly not like female Thor or Lady Thor, whatever they're calling her now. I'm really not looking forward to that movie coming out because I suspect it's probably going to be pretty good. But there is going to be such a culture war surrounding that film. I'm just going to be la 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 not listening, la 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 not listening, la 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 not listening. I'm going to just see the movie and not talk about it because I don't want to hear the screaming. And you're guaranteed that when you replace a character. And in that case, it's Chris Hemsworth getting older. He wants to do other things. You know, they've evolved Thor because you just can't diet like that forever. So they made dad bod Thor and good for them. That was clever, right? But uh, interesting what you think. I'm stoked for Miles Morales. I think it's going to be super fun. Very well planned. I trust in Insomniac. They're like... They're the new Naughty Dog, eh? Like, they're the, the two, the, the double threat franchise now with Ratchet and Clank coming back like a rocket and now Spider-Man as well. And look at how much more fun that two first studio is than the dreary stuff that... Bleh. But that was yesterday's video, not this one. I'm going to wrap now. Help support this channel. Become a monthly patron. Patreon.com slash Anna K. Thanks for watching.